What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? It's that time. It's media clash time. I'm your host, Wayne, as always, joined by... Paul. And this is going to be uh, probably a quick one, because uh, ain't much been happening this past week. Um, definitely haven't really played or watched anything other than big, you know, the big show that's on right now. There's nothing really of any major importance out right now. I played Power Washer Simulator. It's free on Xbox. Power Washer Simulator. I, uh, I screwed up my saves on Ghost of Tsushima, so I'm like four hours back. Mm. Kind of can sucks. There's a bug in the game to where if you look up at the sun, it fucking freezes your Xbox or freezes the game or something like that, and you have to reset it. That sounds fun. Yeah, um, it's amazing. I haven't looked up yet at the sun. Yeah, I was um, I was playing, and I hit the wrong mission. I needed to be able to go and do some other side things. <clears throat> and it went to go do the main mission. I'm like, no, go back. And my the last save I had was like four hours. Uh, so there's like a lot of stuff I have. I'm like, God, I don't want to sit and redo all this shit. You didn't play fucking that stupid cat game? No, I have not played it. I downloaded it, but I have not played it. I thought you would have been all over that game. Jesus Christ, that's... Everybody was playing it. Wednesday, I think it was when it came out. Mm -hmm. So fucking boring. You can beat it in like a couple hours, like two or three hours. There is a trophy for beating it in like two hours and something. Yeah, two hours. There's also a trophy of like, they got these little creatures you got to avoid. Um, oh, they're, they're like giant ticks i guess you could mm-hmm. say and they come and jump on you and you gotta like shake them off and you run away from them and that's basically one level in the sewers is dealing with them so the achievement or trophy is to not get hit by one of them which a lot of people are saying is extremely hard to do i mean it's easy and i mean we can go <clears throat> look and <clears throat> you can go look up to see if anybody's got the platinum yet I'm sure people do. But yeah, it's just... You be a fucking cat and you just... Follow those furries out there. I mean, I, I, know. I mean, there's got to be like a, a, a deeper story to it than just walk around as a cat. There is. So, it's you and a group of cats. And you're going across these pipes. And you got to jump across... All the other cats make it, but as soon as you jump, the pipe breaks mm-hmm. or it fucking falls a little bit, kind of you fall off and you're kind of hanging on with your front paws and you give this sad look like the fucking Puss in Boots and mm-hmm. Shrek movies and then it falls into like this underground city or this city that's in a dome that's constantly covered um filled with uh robots sim uh sentient sentient robots and basically you just do fucking tasks with them trying to get back to your group i mean it's it's i mean it's a 30 dollar game it's not like it it's this game is not worth 30 fucking dollars that's probably that's what that's what a mid level game is. Play this game and you think it's worth buying. I know it's free now for y'all for the PlayStation Plus, whatever. Oh yeah, if you have the like even the mid tier, I think it's on mid tier. Y'all version of Game Pass. It's not Game Pass. It is. No. Um Y'all's games come and go. But then they come back again. Like it'll go away for a while and then come back eventually that's the yakuza games all left and then eventually slowly they all came back again i mean i like it's not to me it's less of a game pass and more of a we've never been we haven't been able to do backwards compatibility since you know we took the like we over engineered the ps3 
So here's your way. Because I'm still, you know, waiting. They were like, oh, if you bought these PlayStation Classics on the PlayStation 3, they'll show up in your account. And I'm like, well, I bought Final Fantasy Tactics. I bought Sokaiden. Uh, I'm waiting for those to show up. And they have not shown up yet. Hmm. So. Um. And I, the fact that all the PS3 is a fucking stream. I'm like, God damn it. Because there's some games on there. I'm like, I'd play them. But they PS3 games and the streaming, and I'm like, I'm not wasting my data. See, I was very close to going on Twitch, just to stream, just to have a because I don't have a mic or a camera or anything. I would just do it straight from the Xbox mm-hmm. and stream power wash simulator. <laughs> but the house uh, controllers don't have microphones built into them. Oh yeah, I can do all that, but fuck, I don't want to talk to anybody. Nobody usually, because I did it once for the Yakuza games, one of the Yakuza games, I think. I was streaming it, and I might have done it for a different game before that, but I was there for like two hours and just like not a single person. Well, I mean, people to always tend to like go to the chan- the, the ones with more people on them. Yeah. Also... I fucking hate Twitch because I went to watch somebody. There's like one or two streamers on Twitch that I actually watch. Um, if I just so happen to catch them live. Um, one of them, Bulbarus King, was playing um, Stray. And um, completely not his. He's a cat guy. Not his type of games. So I was watching him play for a while, and um, it was just bombarded with fucking ads. Like, I watched 10 minutes when I first logged on, got hit with eight fucking ads (laughs) to watch. And then it played for another, I watched him play for like another 40 minutes, and then got hit with 10 ads. That's, uh, I mean, if he's got a decent following, that's why. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, when that, that least... The list of, I think, top 50 mm-hmm. Twitch streamers earners. leaked or earners and how much they make. He was yeah, top, that's top why 40. That's why there's that many that. ads. Yeah. I get annoyed on YouTube when, like, a 10-minute video has got, like, if you just let them play out, like, half, almost half the time in fucking ads. Yeah, there was a... There was a zombie, a Call of Duty zombie guy that I that I watched Noah, Noah J, and he's very fucking. His videos like thirty minutes long, but mm-hmm. it's just every fucking five minutes there's fucking ads. Well, here's the thing: like, depending on how big you are, you can go in there and tell it where to put them. So if it's on a, a, a like a pattern like that, he's telling it to do that. Yeah, I, I imagine, because um, I've seen him where it's up front. And then that's it. Mm-hmm. I've seen them at the very end. People put them at the end. Um, and that's on top of watching the commercials. You watch them do the fucking sponsor. Yep. This video is sponsored by blah, 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 blah. But, um, nothing is coming out until September, maybe October for, um, the, Ubisoft canceled a couple games. They canceled the Splinter Cell VR. Yeah. And they canceled the Battle Royale Frontline Ghost Recon. X Defiant. Whatever the fuck they were calling it. Uh, apparently that got canceled. Yeah, because it was weird. It was a hero shooter. Battle Royale type deal. And you were playing as like the villains. In the games. From the games. Yeah. And what sucks too is the end of October, there's literally like four big games all coming out that same week. You got Batman, Call of Duty. What Batman? The one where Batman's dead. Oh, Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. Whatever it's called. The one that... That's the new thing now to make stories about Batman being dead. 
Um, fuck, what else? It's there was Evil Superman and Dead Batman. There was two other, two other games. Big, uh, like AAA games, all coming out that same week. Oh, uh, within ten days. I don't know. I mean, uh, um, what November? No, no it's, late no, October. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 God of War and. The day before is. I'm just talking about Xbox alone. Oh, I'm like, like there's something's coming out on the eighth, and then October 9th is God of War. I'm like, gee, like everybody's like, oh god, oh uh, what is it? Because they're like, really, do you who do you think's gonna play that? I'm like, I'd play the other one before I play God of War. What is it? Uh, For PlayStation? Yeah. It's exclusive. Where are you? I can't remember what it is. Uncharted? No. I mean, they were literally like, who's going to play this over? Oh, um, so it's Scorn. They're H, uh, the fucking Geiger. No, no, Giger. no, 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 no. It's, uh. No, I'm talking about oh. the Xbox. It's the guy, Giger meets fucking, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. David yeah, Lynch. looks like fucking aliens, but it doesn't really tell you anything in any of the videos. Yeah, so f- then four days later, it's Gotham Knights. And then it's um, Call of Duty, like three days after that. And then you have... Fuck, what was... I guess that was it. So, October 8th, Blood and Bones comes out. Oh, the yeah, the Ubisoft. And then October 9th is God of War. I'm like, I'd play Blood and Bones before I would play... October 7th is Midnight Zones. Marvel, the Marvel game. And I'd play that one before the other two. I'll, I'll be buying that one. Alfred Hitchcock Vertigo. The game. <laughs> Going to this list. Doesn't have a platform, so who knows if it's coming out. Um, no More Heroes 3. Yeah, so... Because I really liked all the, sea, all the pirate combat in Black Flag. And I just added uh, Rogue to my library so I can finally download that and play it. Oh, for people with Switch, the new Mario Rabbits game is also coming out. The date on... Uh, Persona 5 Royale. On what platform? Persona? Yeah. Uh, PlayStation. No, it's got to be something different because Persona 5 Royale has been on PlayStation. It says PC and PlayStation 5. Unless, Unless there's an updated version. Updated, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, well, so I'll be playing, I mean, Midnight Suns and then I might get Blood and Bone, but I ain't getting, I'm not worried about God of War. It'll eventually be free for PlayStation Plus. Horse Club Adventures 2. <laughs> Cthulhu Book of Agents. It's a PC game. I mean, there's just not a lot of stuff coming, like, I don't know, of any significance to me, at least. Skull of Bones, 8th. God of War, 9th. Company of Heroes. I didn't know they still made those. And then the Pokemon games come out a week after that. I know the uh, the date on Amazon for Shredder's Revenge changed to, like, mid-September. Mm. For the physical. I'm like, God damn it. December is the Callisto Callisto Protocol. Protocol. Hello Neighbors 2, which I heard part one was extremely buggy and nobody liked it. (laughs) Never heard of it. Xbox exclusive. Atari 50, the anniversary celebration. Then Q4. And that's going in the next, the beginning of the next year. Ghostbusters game, Spirits Unleashed. Good Simulator 3. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's nothing really. Saints Row is next month. I'm going to wait on that. Yeah. I, I, 
I mean, I like the fact that you can, you, you're not stuck playing as the characters that they keep showing. Like, you can make a character. Apparently, you can make anybody. Like, their customization is well, I mean, yeah, I pretty had the, fucking in-depth. I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, like, it's, yeah, if you want to go and play with sliders. Like, if you're good at making a character with sliders, this is right up your alley. It's the um, WWE, any wrestling game, where you just create your own characters in... Like you said, being good with sliders, you can make, yeah. That's basically you can make what anybody. It, that's basically what it is because it's like the full facial, like it, but it's all sliders. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna make a generic, you know, guy. Because they didn't even, I don't even think they had like my facial hair or anything in it. Because the the creators up as a demo. Yeah, a lot of these games are just like now coming to ps5 or xbox x so it's just a lot of these games that already came out yeah they're getting updates updates yeah that's what it looks like um yeah other than that i mean i'm still not through the damn destiny season pass i take that back saints row is next week this week is it i don't know i'd have to go look. according to this is 23rd i'd have to go look well, no, I mean, that would make it... Tomorrow? No, tomorrow's the 22nd. No, today's... No, yeah, you're right. It'd be Saturday. Yeah, that that's not coming out on a Saturday. I can look. PlayStation app. To the stove. Coming soon. Saints Row... You're not giving me... Unless it's delayed until September. A release date. <laughs> if I had, if I pulled it up on the actual PlayStation, it would probably... It, it'll it'd definitely give me a release date. I don't know why this doesn't have a release date. It just says download the console. Oh, that's the boss factory. That's why. Yeah, this says, according to the Wikipedia, it's it's Saturday. Available eight twenty two, so it's available tomorrow. Okay. I don't know why this they keep saying twenty third. So yeah, technically I could buy it right now. If I pre ordered it right now, it would download right now and be ready for midnight. I'll wait on that. Yeah, no, not for sixty bucks. It would need to be, uh, I'd need to know for a fact that, I mean, what I've seen of it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. I mean, being able to create your own guy to play helped me, it got me a little bit more on its side, but. I mean, nothing's going to beat Saints Row 3 and like the writing and the missions and stuff like that. I think. Uh, Mind you, it kind of got a little I too crazy. three and four on. I think there's a PS4 version of 3 and 4. Fucking Saints Row 2 is you got to stream. It's like God of Hell. Yeah, so all of those are Stand on. Alone. You can get all those on PS4. Well, they're P- yeah, they were on PS4, so you can play them on the PS5. But uh, See, at least that game made sense on why you have all these superpowers. Is because Earth got blown up and now you're in virtual reality. I know. I only got so dumb, though, I couldn't finish it. It was. I bought it when it came out. It, it was good. Like, like I even thought, like, basically becoming president. I'm like, uh, yeah. this is getting a little out of hand. Keith David is your vice president. Yes. Um, they have a scene where they do. They live. It's Roddy Piper versus Keith David. Mm-hmm. And he fucking. Um. But basically, it's fucking a more comedic crackdown. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm like, I didn't finish the last one. I finished three, did not finish four, did f- not get the DLCs. I finished them all. Got out of Hell's so-so. But like you said, with four, the writing kind of went a little too... Like, Man, the fact you kill off Gat, like Gat was the most... Imp- 
important character, like the character everyone knew. Hmm. The only real holdover from every game, other than technically you're supposed to be the same you from all of them. But at the end of three, when you're racing to save the day and they play, I need a hero, it gets you fucking pumped. That's the kind of, like, that's the kind of stuff that made three. Like, <laughs> that's when the writing and stuff in uh, St. Troy was good. Like when you do, because you know it's a trope. It's you know when but it works, and <laughs> there's a reason it's a trope because it works. In Saints Row Four, when you helicopter, I think it was like the first mission, and you jump out the helicopter and you're skydiving down. Or maybe it's three. I think it, it, no, yeah, I take no, it back. It's one of them three. opens. One of them opens on that like the skyscraper bank being uh, like under construction. Yeah, and you parachute out, and they play in Kanye West's power. Mm-hmm. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that was that. That's three, three, yeah. Because um, then that's when they kill Gat, motherfuckers. Yeah, and you got to get plastic surgery, and that's where the customization yeah. part comes in. Um. Yeah, but watching the trailer, like I wasn't impressed with the trailers, uh, gameplay, and that's what I'm, I'm gonna have to watch somebody play it to see. It's one of those games where I'll wait until Black Friday, if it's on sale, then I'll buy it, or oh, if it goes to Game Pass. Yeah, if it, if it doesn't do well, it'll come up with... There'll be, like, some PlayStation Plus discount on it soon yeah. enough. Um, Scorn just looks fucking weird. Yeah, but nothing I've seen of it to me. Like, what is it about other than walking around a creepy Geiger painting? I watched I watched gameplay of it. It was, like, a 10-minute trailer or 15-minute trailer of gameplay, and it was just, like, I have no idea what's going on. This looks like a David Lynch... Mm-hmm fucking movie with Geiger fucking aesthetics. Yeah. Um, now, if you bring Kojima in for the story, then we're getting fucking out there. I'm still trying to figure out what Kojima's working on. For the Xbox? With Xbox, because he kept, he kept push talking about cloud, like Microsoft's cloud shit. It- which again is that that doesn't mean it's Xbox exclusive because Sony and Microsoft partnered up for their cloud shit for it's, games. It's also the man wanted to create a game where when you die the disc burns up. I'm all for him making a horror game because he said he wanted to make a horror game with a game called like interacted with you outside of you playing it. Mm. Like if he's doing that with this, that's kind of fucking cool. Depending on. How much actual shit you can put in it to where it's you don't get the same five fucking text messages or, you know, but if Kojima makes a game where a fucking creepy person calls me on my cell phone, I'm all for it. Because again, the PT fucking demo was creepy as shit. Uh, that was great. I never got to play it, but I watched people oh, play God, it. Oh God, that, that demo was awesome. That demo, it's still on my PS3. I did not delete it. It is still on my PS3. And you can sell that for quite a bit of money. Well, no, you got to sell access to your fucking account. Mm. So, no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm not giving up all the fucking games I've bought on that motherfucker. <laughs> Things we watched... There's one big one that we both watched that's going to take a majority of this. The only thing I've seen is the um, What We Do in the Shadows is still out and still hilarious. The um, That's just the uh, cameras. I'm going to turn the notifications off. Yeah. The uh, couple things... I saved, I uh, uh, added to my list for Netflix is coming out. Either came out yesterday or tomorrow. So I'll probably be watching some of that. A raccoon? Yep, there's a raccoon outside the back door right now. I used to wonder why I would put food out there and it would be like clean. Like, no little nuggets or anything, but then that's when, when I put the cameras out there, I noticed mm. we're getting possums and 
uh, raccoons. So it's just like we're back at the other house. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I only watched. I mean, the only other like, uh, well, we're we're watching when we're just sitting here at night. I'm watching through IT Crowd again. I love that show. I love it. It's so great, especially being an IT person for like seven years. Mm-hmm. We all got treated like like you know you if you're an IT person you get treated like shit. It's just universal. Yeah. Um, but it was really it was really good. I mean that show is just awesome. Um, but I mean I really haven't watched anything else other than you know I watch my AEW every week, every Tuesday. I mean every every Wednesday, every Friday. Depending on what matches are on dark and dark elevation. Yeah, nothing. I mean, the only movie that came out was Nope. I mean, it's like a, it's a slow like if this was regular old school broadcast, te- like this would be the slow Tom anyway. Yeah. Like the July August, like shits they're back filming stuff, but fucking new seasons don't start until like end of August, beginning of September. So this would be the lull. In, in entertainment, if this was like the eighties again, <laughs> I mean, nothing comes out to the movie theaters not until like Bullet Train is like yeah, I think Bullet Train's like the next big one. Super Pets, Super Pets is next week. Oh my god, I saw a trailer that actually shows you what Super Pets is about. Crypto's jealous of Lois. Yeah, you never seen that trailer. The fuck. That is dumb. And Ace the Bat Hound's just a stray. Yeah, it's a stray that they get magical powers. Fucking stupid. By uh, some type of asteroid or alien thing. Because cause a, a pet, like a, a rabbit or a cat or something, steals, uses kryptonite and basically kidnaps um, Superman. So Crypto has to go find him. I mean, that sounds like an old school Crypto story from the old school comics but yeah. again all these years of actual comic stories and then we're just gonna do what we want to do with it um i mean really the only other things that have been happening is trailers before we get into the big show you want to hear something funny hmm. how out of touch sony is so as of right now top gun maverick is number 10 one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Yes. Nick, no, domestically. Domestic. Yeah, domestic box office. So Tom Cruise is going to make over $100 million off of this one movie because he's producer and all this other stuff. Okay. The president or CEO of whatever of Sony basically came out and said, if it wasn't for Venom 2, <laughs> cleared the path for Top Gun to come out. <laughs> He might not be out of touch because they kept pushing Top Gun because they wanted it to come out in theaters. And I think if certain movies wouldn't have made money, it had kept getting pushed. Because, I but mean, Venom, that, the Venom theaters have been back open. You could have... that Top Gun could have came out last year, but it didn't. But Venom 2 didn't really... I don't think it made any money. It got shit canned by the critics and the audience. They finally came to their senses knowing that the fucking Venom movies are shit. Venom came out at the end of Oct- October 1st. Okay, how much did it make? 506. Alright, so it probably still made. It didn't make gangbusters, but... I can only imagine what the the budget was for that between budget and marketing and stuff. Oh, did you see the, uh, speaking of budget and we were talking about the monsters. Trailer. Yeah. He's like, I wish the monsters had a $40 million budget. <laughs> He's yeah. like Halloween. Every one of his movies combined doesn't d- cost. Doesn't even get to like 30 million. <laughs> yeah. So now it's been officially announced that, 
the monsters will go extremely, extremely limited in movie theaters. Yeah, because he said it was always meant to be a streaming movie. Because Netflix has the They're Adams the Family. No, Netflix oh. has Adams Family. Oh. Uh, Wednesday show. Yeah. So the monsters will premiere that same week because he, according to him, it's like the monsters deserve to be on the small screen with Adam's family because that's how it was back then. Mm-hmm. I think he said like 65 years ago that they were basically on the same channel and they were like, yeah, because basically back to I remember back. Like the, <laughs> the, the double toasted when they were talking about the trailer, they were like, Corey was like, when I was growing up, I used to think they just lived on the same street. Cause they were on the same channel. Like they, you know, they just yeah. never saw me, but they was basically the same town. Same. They both all, they both lived on the same street and they wouldn't, they knew one another. Yeah. They probably filmed at the same lot. Yeah. Back lot somewhere. Um, and but, again, like I said, it does look way, monsters does look way better in black and white. I still say this was always meant to go to the theater. And then he realized the public opinion when he released that trail and you're like, Oh shit. I mean, he said it was always intended to go to fucking... Why didn't he say it before they released the trailer? I mean, it's in the trailer. Why would he have to say it? Doesn't say it's going to theaters. Trailer says it's going to whatever streaming service it's going to. I must have never seen it. Cause... Yeah, it's at the very end. It tells it where it's... I thought it was going to Paramount. Or, yeah. I don't know. Or Peacock wanted to. But yeah, it's... The trailer says it's going to streaming... So if anything, they're putting it in theaters to give it a limited run. You never know; it could be up for some award, so you have to put it in a the movie theater. So well, yeah, because that's the only way get that Oscar nomination. When or you know, you're only gonna get a nomination for like whatever weird Golden Globes if you're, you know, still holding out hope that fucking Dis- Sherry Moon distributed by Netflix. Also, um, Halloween Ends got a trailer. Oh, did it? Yeah. I have not seen that yet. It was supposed to come out. Yeah, this this trailer says nothing about streaming. Does it? No. I thought it did. Maybe that's why I'm like putting it. Like, it literally says distributed by it Netflix. It says coming out in September. And that's it. Oh. Whatever. I still Just say... Just give me an option to watch it in black and white. It's... Well, hope you gotta... They probably will. I'm sure Netflix is gonna have that. I mean, that would that's how it should be. I mean, it really, that's how it should be watched. It should be watched in black and white. Because it's a prequel. It's gonna have so many fucking streaming views simply because of just like people on YouTube or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, we gotta shit on the movie and we're gonna watch it. And then you had motherfuckers defending the movie. I mean, you've seen a trailer. Yeah. It might look a little odd, but again, most of the people on the internet talking about it have no idea what the original was even like. No. He, I think Zombie basically came on and said he wanted to capture what it was like. Like, as close as you can to the TV show. Yeah, I mean, the TV show wasn't serious. The TV show was a comedy. I just think the acting is bad. Well, I mean, it's Sherry Moon. Like, her acting is never going to be good. Not her. Even fucking the dude playing um, Herman. Herman was always over the top. No, his voice is not I mean, you're not going to... You're not, like... The only person that that fits the character to a T is Grandpa. I mean, those are the kind of things you can't really... But the um, did you? I know we talked a little about this last week. Did you talk about or seen the Resident Evil Netflix thing? I've seen people talk about it, and I'm just I'm not even okay. When I when I saw that Wesker like was truly like they're trying to oh this is canon, but like Wes is a black guy and he's got two kids and they're in South Africa. I'm like this is not canon. So, and then the fucking chainsaw guy from four is in the movie. And I'm like, no, this is dumb. 
So IGN. Oh yeah, he said it was great. Gave it a nine. Yeah, said it was great. Like everybody, there's all ten. kind of people who say it's so great and openly admit it's it has no connection whatsoever other than like because it they, could literally take the logos and the name out and it's not Resident Evil. It's generic zombie apocalypse. Because they because I I was reading like the 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 cliff notes of like people was retweeting the score of like it's like this is why nobody pays attention to your reviews and stuff like that. And um, like some of the stuff is like, it's a, it's a shot in the arm that Resident Evil franchise needs and how great it was and blah, blah, blah. And then somebody posted their rev- that review, IGN's review of Resident Evil. They gave the Batman a six. Mm-hmm. Like, they, dude, the people that write for IGN are just so not connected. Like, they literally will write... Colin says, like, no, nobody's getting paid to do good reviews and give shit good reviews. What people are doing is they'll give shit good reviews that don't deserve it so they can keep access. They don't want to get blacklisted. Um, fuck, talk to Jeff Gertzman about that. <laughs> he, no, that's He literally got fired from GameStop, well, no, yeah, GameSpot, because yeah, of it. Yeah, but again, it's like... He like Colin said. He's like, in all my years of working at IGN and giving games high scores, I never got paid once to give a game a good score. He says, but he will say that there but are if people. The companies that, and the company is getting a shit ton of money from that game company to advertise on the website. It's basically it boils down to like nobody's the the authors aren't getting the the whole reason an author will go and like that IGN. I guarantee you that IGN person is like, I want to keep. I, I want to be able to, to have access to Netflix. Dude, they gave cut... They didn't give a shit about keeping access with Warner Brothers because Warner Brothers needs them. They gave Cuphead a shit review because the dude couldn't... Oh, yeah, because that dude couldn't play it. It was too hard could, for him. He couldn't make it past the tutorial. Yeah. And again, it, it comes down to... Like, if you can't play the game, don't review it. Yeah, the game's hard, but it's not that fucking hard yeah. that you can't make it past the tutorial. Well, that's just it. Like most of these reviewers that do games, they don't you they don't they don't let people know what their actual game tag is. Cause like on PlayStation, you can then go look. Oh, you're gonna harass the shit well, out no, of No, 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 not yet. You can go look at how far a person, how much of a game a person has played by looking at what trophies they've unlocked. Cause a lot of games will have trophies when there's like legitimate like chapters and stuff, you'll get a bronze for completing chapters. Mm. And like levels, like so, you can go in and look at somebody who's reviewed a game and see just how far they've played. I'll take it back. I watched um, Only Murders in in the Building. I don't like this season. <laughs> like the shit they do in this season is they're even making tiny jokes because they're doing a podcast about the new murder mm-hmm. that happened that they're kind of accused of. And they have like the super fans from season one, and it and they kind of hint it's like, oh well, they're not as good as season two, and it's like, oh, they're in- introducing all these new characters that, and that's when writers, Selena Gomez, writer, writers think they're 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 cute, and that's you know, Selena like I don't like the whole Selena Gomez bisexual angle thing because it's just so out of out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And then that's the products. That's the that's the writers trying to be hip and like mm-hmm. it doesn't know. And the thing that happens to Steve Martin in episode three, which I can't say because it basically spoils season one. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't like. It makes no sense. Yeah, it's it's just you can tell some of these shows that the writers just. It's the Southmore Jinx. Yeah, and then, but I mean, even with like movies and stuff, and you go look at who who's writing them and what their writing credits are, and you go like, those are all shit movies. How did you get a job writing this? Yeah. But I mean, I guess it's like in Hollywood, once you sell a script, it doesn't matter how crap it, the movie ended up being. Like you sold you 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 wrote on something, so you're bankable. I guess I don't know. There's a Teen Wolf movie coming out. I guess going straight to CW or some streaming. I don't know. 
CW's all in a fucking... I don't know what the fuck's going on with them. Oh, they became... Top Gun is ninth domestic all time. Mm. I mean, it's... I don't know. I have no... I'll watch it once it's like free to fucking watch on the on, on like a streaming service. Oh, HBO Max acquired A24 films. Okay. Um, they make a lot of those great indie mm-hmm. movies. So now their their movie library is going to go to HBO Max. Um, John Wick 4. That was like a little teaser picture of him. And a whole bunch of um, room with candles, a la Puff Daddy, <laughs> fucking um, Biggie, Dead Song, whatever the fuck it was. Mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan's new movie got a poster released. Shows absolutely nothing. Yeah, no, I'm trying to figure out how they're gonna make a movie about that guy. Um. Doesn't come out for a whole another year, so... Yeah, I mean... It seems like a... I mean, I don't know if you can find a story, if you made up a story to go along with, like, the re- real life of Oppenheimer and... I have complete faith in Nolan. This movie would be great. I don't even know who the fuck... Batman 3 was a shit show. All right, so... Tenet, eh. Batman 3 was fucking studio involvement. So clearly Nolan doesn't carry the clout that he thinks he does. No, Nolan wanted out. He didn't want to do fucking Batmans anymore. Um, Mortal Kombat movie sequel gets a director. Yeah. More, the first one was okay. Uh, it's Again, I think that's one of those ones where you really just need to have the people that wrote the game come write your 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 script for a movie. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Because we needed to add a new protagonist that's not in anything that no one's fucking connected to, that no one's connected to by the end of the movie either. If you're a fan of the Deadpool movies, a Logan, they will be on Disney Plus tomorrow. Well, yeah, because they, when they put the Netflix shows on, they added uh, an adult thing where you got to put a pin number in. Yep. So, I mean, it was only a matter of time. Again, Disney Disney Plus outside of America, all this shit's already on it. It's only in America that we like separate Disney from the other shit they make. And it's also the... Um, they changed Jessica Jones's name. Like the title of the show. To what? A.K.A. Jessica Jones. Well, that's the actual name of the comic. Yeah, but it was never... It wasn't that name on in the... Uh, no, but I mean, that's... I mean, the actual name of the comic book was that. Uh, Henry Cavill will be Superman again. They haven't announced in what capacity. Where did that announcement come from? Um... Is that an official announcement or is that yeah. some rumor? No, it's an official announcement. Such a waste. Some Warner Brothers person said it, and then now their Warner Brothers panel, a DC panel, um, they're going to fully announce like what they're doing with him. Such a waste. He's, yeah. he's a go to Marvel. I mean, he'd be kind of wasted in Marvel too at this point. Like, all I could see him playing is Captain Britain. Ryan Gosling said if the only way he'll go to Marvel is if he plays Captain Canada. No, I thought he said Ghost Rider. He also said Captain Canada. There is no Captain Canada. Cap- there was no Captain Canada in Alpha Flight. I have no idea what he means, but that's what he said in an interview. Uh, I just want Nicolas Cage to play Johnny Blaze and the dude from S.H.I.E.L.D. to come back and play Robbie Reyes so we can have the two different Ghost Riders, one on a motorcycle, the other in a charger. 
looking like absolute badasses. Madam Web. Oh my god, I don't even it's fucking set in the early 2000s. I don't know what the fuck's like Sony just needs to get over themselves with that shit. Uh got pushed back until the fall of 2023. And one of their fucking movies has got canceled, taken off the fucking list. They just added somebody to it. Um fuck it. I forgot who they just added. They added some other name to this Another shit show. Yeah. Madam Web is not a main character. No. You don't need... Like, what the fuck are you going to do with Madam Web? Yeah, like... Because she's supposed to be old. And ain't nobody in this cast so far old. Uh, Tomb Raider sequel in Limbo. Hunger Games prequel in production. Dungeons and Dragon trailer looks like ass. Yep. All of the comments on the fucking the Instagram post, what I was like, oh, like people like I don't like, bro, y'all, 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 y'all are getting tricked by some paint. Like, ooh, look, a displacer beast, and oh wait, no. We just saw everybody jump into a gelatinous cube. They should all be dead. There you go. I can't watch that movie. You think I could pick apart other shit? I will fucking tear that movie apart. I know my cousin was... I, I don't know if it's that movie or what. I know my cousin worked on a D&D movie at one point that I don't think ever came out. Adam Scott joined uh, Madam Web. Him... Dakota Johnson and Sydney Sweeney Sweeney with uh, Anna Joy Taylor. I think that was her name. Lilo and Stitch is going to get a live action remake. Screenplay story. Starring, you know what's even funnier? Hmm. No, we bought my company bought the music arm from the production company that uh, is doing the D and D movie. Fletch. Is being remade with John Hamm playing Fletch. Going to Showtime. Mm-mm-mm. So I'm guessing they have zero faith in that movie that they sold it to Showtime. I'm gonna I'm gonna I mean, I wonder if there's like a directed video one my cousin worked on. Cause I remember she used to work in wardrobe on films out here. She was shooting. They were shooting. She said it was a Dungeons and Dragons movie, and she asked me what someone would keep their makeup in, and I'm like, what? I'm like, is uh, fantasy setting makeup's not really a thing? But uh, so I went digging through, like my D and D books at the time, to find what a pouch would look like, like what a little fucking pouch would look like, and sent it to her. I'm going to assume that was either a direct-to-DVD movie or it never panned out. Mm. It's sitting on a shelf somewhere. Oh, don't hold hope. Jim from The Office is going to be playing Mr. Fantastic. I don't know what I mean. He's a, a good older Mr. Fantastic. Because they basically came out, Sam Raimi came out and said that was just fan for the fans, and that was it. Because they they were naming some like there was a leak that some actor that I've never heard of was in the lead to play uh, Richard. Yeah, I, I mean I. If it was going to be an older read, then it'd be different. 
but I don't want a Reed who... Like, the Reed shouldn't show up at first as somebody as old as John Krasinski. Like, no. Like, Reed as he is in the comics right now, yeah, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt. But, no, I don't, I don't think he should be the new one. Because there's no telling. Like, that panel on Saturday is probably going to drop. Either drop a lot of shit on us or drop nothing. And they're going to wait for D23 to show us other shit. Um, so let's get into the big thing that we basically watched this week. And that was the second episode of the second season. Well, second half of the last season of Better Call Saul. There's only four episodes left. Yes. And we got... Saul going full Saul Goodman. Jimmy McGill is gone. The, um, you always figured Kim was probably the reason he goes full Saul. Yeah, because I mean, something, something she, something had to happen to her that he would go full Saul. It was like either she dies or she leaves him. Like, like, or something like, I didn't even think, I didn't even, the the whole leaving didn't even pop into my head until it happened. Like, oh shit, she's just gonna leave. Yeah. Like, if something happened to her and she left, I, I don't consider that like her just leaving. I'm like, no, something happened and she left. Like, this is her just going, I'm done, I'm leaving. Cause the, um, the great thing about this episode is the beginning, how they're showing them basically doing their day to day stuff. Like nothing happened and trying to keep that facade. Yeah. And she can't, she's the one you can tell. It's like, Oh she, yeah. When she leaves, at she the just end. can't, she just can't handle it. No. Cause Jimmy's more a practice. Jimmy's, Jimmy's good at it. Yeah. Um, and then you get to the, Mike and his crew cleaning the mm-hmm. apartment, making sure everything's digging in the wall, looking for the bullet fragments and stuff like that, and completely putting everything exactly the way they yeah, were. Yeah, and them going to stay in the hotel. Like, because even though it was all back to normal, they were like... Oh, there's no way you can stay there after. Um, and it's just like the... Like the her when she goes in the court and she's like, I can't represent this person anymore and doesn't want to go into it. And then she's like, all right, I'm not a lawyer anymore. Yeah. And the, even the worst thing was when they go to HHM and they go to the, um, I guess the, it's like the wake funeral, wake funeral thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, uh, Hamlin. So all those pictures of him, the scuba diving mm-hmm. and all that other stuff, that was his real pictures from his Instagram. Of course. I mean, that's that's usually how they, they end up doing. Even even, no. even some shows when they show like, uh, I know Lois and Clark did it. Uh, not Superman and Lois did it with the kids, like their twins yeah. that they have in the show as teenagers. Like in the be- like when you see in the beginning of the first season, they show like pictures of it, like it's them. It's actual pictures of them hmm. when they were kid, like they were small, that they photoshopped them together and stuff. Yeah, it's um, them talking to the wife and trying to. And the fact that Kim, like that's why I'm like I wasn't I, I didn't see Kim leaving because she dug it in the into the wife, and I'm like honestly, yeah. you're the reason. Like I, you were making him live in the fucking guest house. Yeah. Like, but she knew. I didn't see any. I didn't know anything. Like it y'all was, was split. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was just a simple fact of she knows he's never done drugs. He's not this type of person. That this is there's something more to this. Mm-hmm. And just nobody believes her. Like people that's been knowing him for years. Well, yeah, because they went out of their way to make sure the the, the people who needed to know saw yeah. him with drugs and. Poor Ed Begley Jr. has to sit there all awkwardly and like, all right, bitch, you're kind of making a scene here. Yeah. You gotta, this ain't the place. But yeah, I thought it was a nice touch that they actually took his Instagram mm-hmm. real pictures to of put him up. on yeah. vacation to put up. Um, 
And it's, it, but I mean, like, that's why Kim just leaving. I'm like, dude, you did not need to tell that woman. Yeah. You didn't need to dig it in that much more. Like, you, you had the perfect cover. He lost his shit in that meeting and then came to y'all out of his mind and then left. Yeah. That's all you needed to say. And then the fact of, I, I figured something was up when she, when they go to leave in the parking garage and she just, no, she just kisses him and, kisses does, him and, and, and leaves. leaves. I, I figured like he was going to come home and she's just gone. No, there was no fucking explain, explanation. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad they didn't do that. Like, I think it, I think it, it solidifies his turn to Saul and just like Jimmy being completely washed away by yeah. her doing it that way. Yeah, it's the fact of when he comes home and he's just frantic and he's like, we can do this. We, we can, can fix it. Yeah, because yeah. like clearly it got back to him that she fucking quit, you know, resigned from the bar and everything. Yeah, so him giving him the speech and then her turning around saying how we're bad for each other and oh, we're poison. We're good people, but we're poisoned together. I still kind of hold together. out that they're going to like... We've got to have some kind of payoff of the flash forwards. Well, yeah, I'm sure that's going to be probably the last episode. Yeah. I still hold out that maybe Kim shows up. And the whole now that they're completely away from the life, they can. And the whole fact of when Jimmy looks at her and says, I love you, and she says nothing back and just leaves and yep. starts fucking. And it's just the look on his face. Uh,. Brilliant acting by Dave, uh, Dave, uh, Bob Odenkirk and Bria Seahorn. Yeah. And, um, and then Gus going to. That was the bit that just felt out of place. I'm like, he's out celebrating. Like, this is not like we now, we have to hammer it home that the the Gus is going to start fucking screwing up. No, it's the fact of. He's not not Gus going to the to the restaurant. It's Gus going to the Don. Oh yeah, yeah, that Don Julio. Don no. Pal- Palato. Yeah, Pal- Skullface guy going to the cartel. That's a great. That was kind of a great scene. And it's just fucking poor uncle just sitting fucking just hitting the shit out of that bell. And the cousin, the cousins talk, which I fucking hated. Only one of them said something, though. No, they both said something. Did they? I thought yeah. only one of them acknowledged that. Oh, no, that's right. He goes, yeah, did you see the bodies? Yes. It was burned. Yeah. I mean. That was the first time. But they had that that mystique of them because they've never spoken. The, best of, best of my knowledge, like, they've never the, spoken. In the in the grand scheme of the way you tell a story, they would have had to have spoken at some point. Otherwise, it would have needed to have been another person there to speak to answer that question. I still love that fucking scene of the cousin from Breaking Bad in the fucking hospital with his legs chopped off when he got hit by um uh fucking Walt Walt no. Um god the brother-in-law. Oh, um yeah, I can't remember what God, I'm fucking blanking on his name. I knew his real name, Dean. Yeah. Anyway, and when he sees Walt, and he just fucking sees him, and he's just crawl, gonna crawl to him to fucking murder him um, with no legs and stuff like that. It was such a great fucking scene. Uh, God, fuck, I can't fucking blanking on his name anyway um but yeah him going there gus going to the and just basically showing that now he can be in like i don't it doesn't deserve a response like you're you're right i'm not gonna respond because it doesn't deserve a response (laughs) and then don's like did you find it yes we found it back did it match the dental record yes it did yeah lalo did too good of a job Uh, and it's like all right Hector, go, you get this. Gus, you get this. Now go sleep in my bedroom. He's like, eh, I got it. And I love that he just makes fun of him at the end. He's like, oh, I'm here all night. Da, 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 da. That damn bell. <laughs> but 
But now, Hank, I knew it started with a fucking H, and I just mm. don't know why Harry kept pep- popping in my head. It was Hank. Um, but now, at the end of this episode, we have officially gone into the Breaking Bad timeline. Yes, because this has got to be, like, we have had to have gone through the first year of Breaking Bad during this time jump. Yes. Because it's going to take him a while to completely transition, like, the house and everything, the office. That's not going to happen, like, overnight. So, you've, you've got to figure you've gone a See, good six months to a year. Here's the thing. He talks about his ex-wives in Breaking Bad. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he was telling the truth. And who knows? He might have some, like... Married some prostitute. Yeah. And then divorced her or whatever for some scam. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's uh, the the prostitute comes down for reference. Like, there's some new cereal bar, cereal bars. You can take some of those and leave. And then um, he doesn't have the consti- Did he have the constitution on, on the, the back wall? wall? Yeah, all yeah. It, all of it's there. Okay, so what I'm saying. So the time jump clearly, I think, takes play takes up most of season one. So. Apparently, it got leaked. Certain characters are going to appear in the next episode. That's from Breaking Bad. Mm. I know Cranston said they're in three scenes. One scene is both of them together. One scene is him by himself. And then Jesse's got a scene by himself with Saul. So it's... Yeah, yeah, it's got to be somewhere in season two at or after. I mean, if there's that many scenes, it might be in multiple episodes. So here's the thing. what Now what do you do with Saul? Yeah, no, that is the problem. You have to wrap him up pretty quick. Like, I mean, he's got to come under the full employ of Gus without meeting Gus. Yeah, without knowing who Gus is. Yeah. So, because he goes through Mike mm-hmm. for everything. Um. You gotta imagine he's got the book from the veterinarian. Yeah, no, I figured we were gonna get to see that him actually get the book. Um, how do we? How do we bring Bill Burr into this? Yeah, but I just want to say, well, Bill Burr's got to show up if they got him to do at least a cameo. And here's the big thing: Hugh wasn't the fucking doorman. He wasn't there when when he arrived at the. Yeah, office. that's what I'm saying. So we're we're in that we might, we may be in like a right around the end of the first season. Yeah. Not fully in the second season. Maybe Tuco shows up. Shows back up. <laughs> I mean, technically he gets out of jail. Mm-hmm. There's a great cut, like Photoshop, of when Thanos goes to snap. Oh, yeah, it's Tuco. Tuco fucking Instead, cracking the... Uh, Tuco cracked him up and snorting the fucking Infinity Stone. <laughs> Such a good fucking cut, like so good. I would, I would watch that movie, <laughs> Thanos versus Tuco. Dude, fucking crazy. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, the show is so good. Like, I kind of wish we could binge it, but it does, it does give something to look forward to. I do say Hank took down most of the big bad guys himself. Mm-hmm. He, he took down Tuco. He took down the cousins. Yeah. Um. Fucking. Who's the one Gus has to answer to? Is that Don Julio? Gus answers the Don Palito. Like, I think he answers the Don Palito and he shares power with the other one. Yeah. That was left over. No, he answers to him. That's right. He does yeah. answer to the other guy. Um, It's such a great scene going and back. And all of them die the other poison. than Hector at the pool, at the pool poison, right? Yeah. Even the dude he answers to, I, I I'd think I think on. so. Okay, it's been a while because I know that's when Jesse was there and Mike was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, he took the poison too, and they yeah. had to like they administer had, the antidote or whatever to keep him alive. Yeah, I think Jesse had to shoot him with the adrenaline. Yeah, and the anti venom or whatever. Um, yeah, because he was introducing Jesse as his new cook, mm-hmm. like the guy who makes the blue. Yeah. Um, 
but that's such a great shot of him standing over the pool looking in the shot of mm-hmm. the camera from it's yep the, the, the spot where they drowned his that's that, that's what makes this show so great like, that's what makes a prequel good you know what's sad though even if all the like if if like obi-wan and a prequels for star wars were shot and done just as well people would still bitch about them yeah like nobody's bitching about this because you know only the i mean certain people like comb over breaking bad to look for the fucking the the mirrors like nobody's making content online talking about all the fucking same shots or whatever setting up oh this is this this is this fucking screen crush did a video of like i think where it is in the timeline and what jesse and them could be showing up to do and i don't think they haven't made a fucking better call Saul video in like forever because it's not it doesn't drive views it's only it's a very niche fandom well it's Breaking Bad was a very niche yeah, show. Yeah, until that second half of that last season when it exploded. No, if you go look at no, if you go look at the ratings, it's the it's, second half of that last season, the ratings exploded because it was off the air for a while. No, because it was also, um, when it got to Netflix, when it originally went to Netflix, and I think the first three or four seasons was on Netflix, and then season five, that's when it. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't go like nobody is ever gonna know what the. So the numbers were on Netflix, but I'm talking about actual broadcast. Yeah, because if you look at the ratings, like the first couple seasons, nobody was watching Breaking Bad. Like, yeah, I think even Gilligan said that um, they thought maybe it was going to get canceled because it was just it never had the ratings. But it was just good enough for AMC to keep it keep it going, and then it just exploded. Um, yeah, because season one. Premiere one four one four one one under one 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 five season two one six one six one 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 two one two one four one two one zero one two one 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 two one 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 five season three same thing nothing <laughs> nothing getting over a one six except the premiere was a one non season four. Yeah, that's where it exploded. Mm-hmm. The premieres are two five. Everything else is still under two, and then season five, two non like, so part one two non two 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 four two eight two non two seven. Second half is when it doubles, yeah. five nine four seven four eight four four five one six three six five, and then the finale was a ten. Cause I want to say. I think it's because Netflix... this was a big break. Like, there was a good bit of time between the think, first half of the season and the second half of the season. I think that was the writer's strike. Mm. I mean, it aired in 2012 and then in 2013. It, no, there was a year in between, almost. And that wasn't around the time the, the writer's strike happened? Because I know there was a big writer's strike yeah, around that time period. But I mean... So the first episode of season five o- air, o- o- premiered July 15th and the last episode of the first half was September 2nd. First half of the second part was August 11th, 2013. And then the last episode was September 29th. Yeah, so it, was, it took like a year off. So it probably got a lot of people watching on Netflix. And then, but I mean, still, it's only like double the numbers. Like it didn't explode, explode. But compared to like season one and two. And oh yeah, like we, like again compared to like the first half of the last the the first half of the for that last season. Because I want to say, I think it's contributed to Netflix getting the streaming rights to Breaking Bad, and then it just it's one of those shows people were binge watching. Oh and yeah, it just I mean, 20, exploded. 20, Everybody was talking about it. Twenty twelve to twenty thirteen. That's like prime. Netflix has everything. Yeah, and that's. Hey, it's that guy from fucking Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Like, <laughs> He's a drug dealer. Yeah, it's 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 like prime Netflix with all the shit they have. The, like he was they on, had everything because there was no other streaming services. He was on Power Rangers. Dude, Brian Cranston was on a lot of shit. Yeah. Brian, um, Seinfeld. Well, he had a more prominent... Um, dude, he was like... I'm telling you, he was like a guest actor on a shit ton like stuff that we watched 
like he just showed up as like a reoccurring. Like and he I, he was on uh, King of Queens, I like as a reoccurring. Give two shits about that show. It wasn't and that bad. Any CBS show. King of Queens wasn't that bad, but I mean, again, it was he was like a neighbor. But it's also the fact of Malcolm in the Middle. Like I think it was one of those every couple seasons he he won best for yeah best comedy lead. Mm-hmm. I mean, but again, like I said, like he just showed up on all kind of shit. Yeah, I don't know what he's been doing since, like since Breaking Bad and whatever the fuck he wants. The script selections hasn't been. I mean, he did Wushimaniki after Breaking Bad. That one way he played the guy that got blacklisted. The McCarthy shit? It was... Yeah, he played one of the... Like, it was during set during that, but he was like a screen... Like uh, a, yeah, one of the one of the blacklist, yeah. blacklisters. Um, um, damn, he's probably just doing whatever the hell he wants. Like, he doesn't probably need... Pro- Between Malcolm in the Middle, which is on Netflix, like, on one of these streaming services. Think about it, he played LBJ on Broadway. Yeah. Got a lot of like great reviews for that. Mm-hmm. And then he turned that into a movie or a TV movie or something like that. Yeah. Mini series. Was it LB no, was it LBJ or fucking Teddy? No, uh Franklin Roosevelt. No, I want to say it was LBJ. Okay. Um and then now he's in that lottery movie. He was at some celebrity all star game. I don't know. I kept seeing the title saying he got kicked out or whatever, but I'm like He was so every year for the uh baseball all star break, they do Thursday was the celebrity softball mm-hmm. which he was in and he came out full fucking beard, looked like a homeless person. <laughs> wearing representing the Dodgers. And then um the ump called a strike three looking on him didn't agree with the call starts yelling at the ref and starts kicking dirt on him and the Miz was there because oh, <laughs> he does all that shit yeah he's he's fucking Vince's uh go suck fucking dick in public Miz yeah um but I mean it's fucking again like I said I wish we could binge but it does it, it does it does feel it, it is nice to have something to look forward to of that caliber every week. Yeah. Like, I don't have, like, Monday, I'm like, all right, Tom, like, fuck wrestling, da da da, whatever. Fuck oh, I give two shits. I'm counting the minutes yeah. until fucking eight o'clock. And I got to watch it on fucking Amazon fucking video. So I got to wait until, like, because it says airing live. Like, yeah. you can watch it as it airs. Or I had to, like, the week before, I had to wait, like, 45 minutes for, like, the. On demand. Like the on demand to be able to start mm. the on demand. And it does suck. I got to sit through commercials, but whatever. That's why usually most of the time I would wait until about 820. Same with Dynamite. I would wait until. Yeah, like, so you can fast I, forward. I can fast forward to commercials now, and like, shitty Hulu matches. Now lets me fast forward through their commercials. I'm like, thank God. Like I can actually just jump the commercial and it mm. fucking goes. But yeah, it's a. Uh, you got four episodes left. If. If you listen to podcasts, the official Better Call Saul podcast is very good because they bring in Vince and Peter Gould and all the people like the set designers, all the fucking costume people, the editors, all the hosts. Mm-hmm. They bring in the directors of the episodes and sometimes the actors. I'm guessing I haven't listened to this new season when they've just started, but I'm I'm guessing Lalo was probably on on last week. Maybe Hamilton was on mm. last week. Um, but now we got an official confirmation where Bob Odenkirk had his heart attack, what, what scene it was. And it was in the second half premiere where Lalo is giving his speech on telling Kim and Jimmy what to do. Mm-hmm. And a Apparently, that's according to Bob this week because he's changed it since last week. According this week, it's um, that was the scene, and that he was mistaken that this past episode was the first thing he shot after getting out of the hospital and going mm. back to set was this 
episode. That's why last week he said this was the episode where I had my heart attack, but he won't say the scene. Mm. And um, yeah, that was that was from the podcast this past week. I mean, the episode was just so good. The show's so good. Bob but I will is, tell you, it's like it's weird. Like I don't, it's it's oh, it's one of those shows. Like I don't know that I can go back and watch. Like we wa- we sat and watched Breaking Bad because I didn't watch Breaking Bad when it first came on. Like mm-hmm. I watched the second half of the last season with Teresa when it came on. I, I hadn't seen anything, so we had to watch. I think in that that break, like the first half of 2013. Yeah, we watched it. But it's not like going to like the office or anything. Like, where we Didn't we watch it at Justin's on. house? We watched parts of the the second half. Yeah, at Justin's. I thought it was at the premiere. Was it might have been? Yeah, I mean that was was August. in the back room. I mean that was July of 2013. So yeah, that would have been me. I'd have been there. Um, because I never because Tim, my stepbrother was a is a huge fan of the show. And then, like, just hearing all this fucking buzz. So I binged it on Netflix and then, Mm -hmm. I guess, started season five watching it episode by episode. And then, um, which I do with a lot of shows back then, like Game of Thrones, I didn't start watching until, like, season three or something like that. I know. I was in, I was in on that until it started getting like till it started de- I was in on Game of Thrones until it started deviating too much and then I was like, no. Well, we had a tradition. Uh, I forgot what season we even started this. Is we would every Sunday we would go to Justin's house. Like mm. me, him, his brother, Vinny, cousin Steve and um Caleb eventually started showing up and we would just every Sunday watching Game of Thrones live and doing our little discussions afterwards. Yeah. I, I was so like, cause that started way back when he was still living at mother's Yeah, in the back room. Yeah. Even that first season, I like when things that like I had read through, I mean, I had read all those books back to back. Cause I mean, I didn't read them when they first came out, like in the nineties, like I read them after they were all out and I just read basically everything straight through. Yeah. So like everything's fresh in my mind and I'm like, yo, oh, this is so horrible. So I was just, I was, I was done. He's I really, gonna, he's going to break my heart and never finish the damn series. He's going to die before that fucking whatever book comes out. <laughs> Dude, is there like two books? There's supposed to be like two books left. He's too busy doing other things. Hey, look. He made that fucking game. Elden Ring. He fucking wrote Elden Ring, basically. And there was like TV shows he was writing for. And fucking. I mean, I get people can write more than one thing at a time, but I'm like, dude, come on. It's been what? Since like, what? Season one? Season two? Dude, when was the last book he came out? It's, it's been a while. Because that was it, it was a running joke. That was like, yeah, they're gonna this show's gonna catch up before the next book comes out, which they ended up doing. It was like, then what then what they're gonna do? They fucking panicked and were like, Okay, all your fan theories, we're gonna just gonna do that. No, they didn't even do that. No, the shit they wanted to do, uh, like with John and Cersei's I mean, uh Khaleesi and Oh, I mean, that's just, that. that's, a, I mean, I don't think that's fan theories. I think that's like the only. John, because there was always a big fan fan theory that John was a Targaryen, that he was the. Uh, I mean, no, that's pretty implied. Bastard child. Yeah, that's pretty implied in the, like you get that in the book that it's pretty implied that he mm. is, uh, what's his face's sister's son. Ned. Yeah, he's Ned. Like he's technically Ned's nephew. Like that's that. That's not a fan theory. That's just Martin laid it out like this. The whole uh, the Targaryen kidnapped his sister, brought her to the tower. Ned and uh. uh the- John, Jonathan? No. No, I don't remember. The Baratheons. I should know them. It's this fucking same fucking sigil as my actual fucking house song. 
Um, they fought the war. They led the rebellion. The, the North rebelled against the fucking kingdom to go get the yeah it was the to bat- save the sister. The Battle of Something River. And then when they got into the tower, they found the sister covered in blood, and she doesn't make it out. And then he comes back to fucking Winterfell with what he claims is a bastard who he fucking yeah. slept with some woman while he was out on the, like, you know, yeah. cause that's how long he's been away from Winterfell long enough for him to have hooked up and had a kid and brought it back with him. It was also the, she whispered well, yeah, she t- before she died. Yeah. So, I mean, it's basically, it's not a fan theory. It's heavily implied. Like, I think that's the only thing that they took from what he has it. Cause he hasn't explicitly said it. Cause at the end of the last book, he's dead. Like that's the bit where he dies. Uh, the fucking uh, the wildlings and shit killing. No, he gets stabbed by all the fucking Night Watch people. Like that's where the like that's how the other, the last book ends. But um, yeah, so I really do hope. Two thousand and eleven is okay. when the last book came out. So it's been a decade. Winds of Winter is forthcoming, and then A Dream of Spring is planned. So, in that time span, he wrote... One, so, what, like 90... Four like, books. Yeah, yeah the in, first four in, books. Yeah, the first four books in ten years. And then it took him six years to write the last book, and then it's been a decade. He could have written all four of the original books Yeah. in the time that's passed. So, I, I don't know. It's... The books are really I, I, that's just crazy. It's it's the books are really good. I just anything it going back to Breaking Bad, I mean uh Better Call Saul is I really do wish it might not be this time, it might be next year's Emmys. They might just give them here's a couple of Emmys for y'all. But yeah, because whatever however the end of this season's gonna play out. Yeah. Although I mean for this the first half of the season, I think he deserves the Emmy. Oh, Saul? Yeah. And I still just don't understand the whole, like, she is a listed as a supporting actress, not a lead it might come down. It might come down to screen time. And it's so weird. It might be screen time or dialogue or something like that. Mm-hmm. Some, yeah, I mean, it's got, there's got some to be some weird, arbitrary rule. Yeah, some weird rule that you have to meet the quota to be mm-hmm. considered a lead. Considering she's, like, the only fucking female in the goddamn yeah, show. The whole fucking show. Um, that the plot revolves around. Yeah, like it, her wanting to do the thing to fucking Hamlin this whole season. No, I mean not only other females in the show. That's well, that's what I'm saying. Like she, like the pl- the main, like, she's the main driving point of the plot. She's the yeah. only female, that, you know, really that does anything. The um. Oh, I love the flash forward when the fucking secretary has basically just lost all fucking, like when she first got hired by by Saul. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like all chipper and everything's bright, and she's like, and then you know this now that they're in, you know, so he's full blown Saul. She's just like giving up on life. Like it, the whole time from when he wakes up, he's yelling at her, and then yeah, walks in, walks in, still yelling at her, and just. Turns with, the earpiece without off. a beat. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing you probably gonna see Badger. You probably gonna see yeah. Every all those people should start showing up. Yeah, Crazy Eight probably show up again. Yeah, I can, Jimmy said. No, uh, Jesse said he got him off twice. Crazy Eight. Yeah, so we've only seen the one where he basically flips him to be a a CI. He's got to be, he's got to get involved in something else. Not, no, that's, Crazy Eight is the dude fucking, uh, Walt kills in the basement. Yeah. And Jesse said, Jesse, when they go, go to Saul, he got my friend's cousin off like twice with like some heavy shit. He was a CI? Yeah. I don't remember. Saul turns, Saul flips him to, uh, to Hank. Cause Hank, yeah, Hank's and like, the only breaking, like the only real main Breaking Bad people that haven't showed up yet are Walt, Jesse, 
Skyler. The wife and the son, because Hank and his partner showed up already. Um, Crazy Eight showed up already. Granted, no, we might be pat. Crazy Eight might be dead at this point. Nina, Is, was that Hank's wife's name? What's the fucking name? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, whatever. Yeah, Maria. Wife, Maria. Maria. His wife. His wife hasn't shown up yet. The one that was yeah. always in purple. It's fucking. It's minerals, Maria. <laughs> um. I'm trying to think of who else. Yeah, so Crazy Eight. If this, if if Saul, if this Saul, we just jumped over the first season. Saul, wait, Crazy Eight's dead. Yeah. Will Todd show up? No. <laughs> I mean, that would be Don't introduce that Todd would be yet. that would be stretching. Like, why going way for like into that would the season. that the only way you could do something like that is just to have him walk through the background and hope people notice it. Because Todd doesn't show up, I think, until season four, I think, is when Todd shows up. Or the beginning of season five. Because they do the, the train robbery. Yeah, I think that's the beginning of season five. And then he kills the oh, kid. That's a fucking... You can look at some of the best episodes ever fucking made for television. And there's like a handful just out of Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's... I mean, that, to, to, to have Todd would be to just have him in the background somewhere. Nobody interacts with him. Unless his uncle shows up. Like, he gets his uncle off. Yeah, I mean, it would, we'd have to be doing something like that. I just don't think Jimmy would... I think Jimmy does have some, like, you know... Nah, Jimmy's... Unless if, it was a shit ton of money. If they got money, he'll fucking do it. Yeah, I think, I think you would have to make the, deter- the distinction, like, yeah, I'll yeah. take a shit... It's going to cost you a shit ton of money. I don't, I, at this point, he doesn't have a conscience. Like he's full blown Jimmy, slipping Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I think a, a better way to have like Todd show up is like just to have him in the background somewhere. Don't bring any attention to it. Just have him in the background, like at like fucking Los Polos, fucking getting some chicken. Hmm. Like, don't bring attention to it. Just let it like act, like he's a fucking extra that's in focus. Is Lyle still employed at the Los? You would think so, yes, right? He was what star manager, the one from the one that Gus calls. Yeah, yeah. Because doesn't the ch- the restaurant get blown up at some point in Breaking Bad, or did it get bro- blown up in one of the like a fire or something? I don't know. Oh, they make it look like a fire. Yeah, like they dropped the grease and mm-hmm. I mean they dropped whatever into the into yeah, the yeah, yeah. deep fryer. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, so I would you would assume he's got to be. Unless something happens and he's not the manager anymore, but you gotta assume. He's I gotta still say, there. Vince is such a stickler for details that, especially with their characters between the two shows and stuff like that, it's got to be the same guy is also in Breaking yeah. Bad. Um, because if it only takes place in a year, like I'm guessing he's still like the only thing in this past episode, the only thing that didn't that felt way out of place, like you said, was the bar scene. Yeah, drinking the wine, talking to the the Matri D dude, and I guess they were kind of trying to hint that possibly he's gay, or wasn't that the dude from? Is that the dude? Was that uh, what's his Matthew Modine? No, that's he's been in a ton of stuff. He looks like Matthew Modine. He's one of those guys. It's like that dude looks so familiar, and then you look him up in, on IMDb, and he's like, oh, he's in this, this, and this, and, like this and this, and this, and this. Yeah, he mainly plays fucking assholes. And There's one like because I mean the scene just seems so out of place, and it's like he went to celebrate, he's happy, and then because Teresa's like yeah, and then he realizes no, I can't do this. There's still p I I still have to like shit needs to still get done. Oh, it's just a facade that he's trying to. Pull well, he's got a yeah. Keep. I mean, he's got a he's got to show his face as like you know. Because he is a local celebrity on the news and shit. I'm guessing he didn't like the wine that the dude picked out. I mean, he finished it. He didn't just hang. He just had, didn't hang around for the the other bottle. I think that might that might be what it is. It's not, you know, people want to take it as hinting that Gus is gay or whatever. I think it's more of Gus has to keep up that image of local celebrity. You know, businessmen. Yeah. What sucks is um, the season finale 
the first half season finale. Um, for the longest time, had a ten mm-hmm. on IMDb, and it fucking dropped down to a nine point nine. But um, the premiere is an eight point eight, and this past episode's a eight uh, nine. I mean, uh, nine point eight for the premiere, and this past episode was nine point five. You'll never. I don't think you'll ever get like things that have like solid tens, even if they deserve it. I because th- there's too many people out there now who just will go find faults with shit just to find faults with it. I want to say. Oh, the guy Sal has to answer to is Juan uh, Bolsa. Juan Bolsa is the guy he has to answer to. But um, I got I got to look up Breaking Bad episode, the Ozymandias. Mm-hmm. For the longest time, that was like one of the only uh, ten. I mean, that is what one of the, the the episode people basically say is the best one out of all of them. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it, it's, it, it's such a good show. Breaking Bad was such a good show. But it, like I said, I don't think it's one that I can go back and watch again. I don't think I could go back and binge and like watch Better Call Saul again. I just have a hard time sitting through hour long dramas I've already seen. Yeah, you know what's. It's like I couldn't go back. We were going to, at one point in time, we were going to talk about Highlander and I just could not, like, I know them all. God, dude. I just couldn't sit through them. I had to tap out. It was... Oh, yeah, because that, so that was back bad. when they had... To get syndication, you had to have, like, 22 episodes a season. Oh, my God. It was so bad. I had to tap out. I'm I so got you- I got to the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and... Um, dude, the backstories are so great. Like, Mythos' backstory is so great that he's, like, one of the oldest fucking immortals. He was one of the horsemen. Was it David? I, I fucking I can't pick the actor on who played the uh, the restaurant guy. But anyway, yeah. So, oh yeah, and then you get the scene when Mike goes talks to Nacho's dad. And yeah, Nach- Nach- Nacho's dad knows what's going on. Yeah, he basically like all you gangsters are all the same. Yeah, it's not justice. Yeah. Um. And Mike trying to be nice. Mike's like, you know, don't worry about it. It's gonna get taken care of. Like Mike, because Mike honestly openly feels like he feels bad because they betrayed. Yeah, Nacho. And, and he's like, I'm gonna make like it's gonna get, you know, not by him, unfortunately. Yeah, he's not gonna get to get do it, but you know, same with Hamilton. Like he f- he felt bad for Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. And people want a Mike show. I'm like, I don't know. You can't do a Mike show. A Mike prequel works. No, what, him in Philly? Yeah. You can't de-age him that much. I know, people like, just don't do it. <laughs> he always looked like that? Yeah, he just looks like a scary old man that you don't want to mess with. No, you leave it at this. You do, you finish Better Call Saul and that's it. No more. You did the fucking movie. Yeah, because I don't even, you couldn't even do anything. I mean, unless... I, Jesse isn't a he's not that that actor's not good enough to, to hold a show no you're not gonna do a whole fucking show about Jesse being a dropout and a uh, fucking degenerate in high yeah, school yeah. but no, no I'm talking about like a, a, to a continuation him afterwards yeah nah if anything if Walt survives then maybe you can do one about Walt no I don't think uh, Walt should be dead Yeah, Walt, Walt should be dead. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you couldn't, you can't, I mean, the only way I would be okay with any other continuation of a story is if it was Vince Gilligan doing it. If he had an idea to continue a story, I'd be like, all right, it's your story anyway. You tell me that, you tell me the story you want to keep telling. It's, uh, Or is it? Yep, Ozzy Mandaris still has a ten, mm. with a hundred and seventy-three thousand reviews. <laughs> is that on IMDb? Yep. Yeah, I can't stand IMDb. I was gonna try and get fucking uh, ranked on Rotten Tomatoes. 
Toy Mon would count, but I just nine by four. Writing no. review, writing is not my no yeah. strong I, suit. I tried it once and it, writing reviews and just wasn't it. Uh, nine point four, nine point two, nine point six, nine point one, nine point eight, ten, nine point six, nine point nine. That was the second half finale. I mean, the second half of the show was pretty. The second half of the last season was pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, there's not much else left to talk about. Uh. Not until this weekend when we see the Marvel panel, the DC panel at San Diego. Yeah, like Thursday and Friday, like Thursday and Friday aren't really big reveal days. I mean, there's a lot of cool toys. Oh yeah, that's what I'm like, like statues and shit. There's uh, a Final Fantasy statue that's like thirteen thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars or something like that. The uh, dude, the fucking Final Fantasy, those uh, Play Art Kai fucking figures are like one hundred fifty bucks piece for Final Fantasy. There's like one hundred fifty dollar action figures. Oh, AEW has. Yeah, that's all AEW and Mattel. AEW and WWE put about all their fucking They got a panel. Figures. Uh I'm still waiting for like an ultimate sting. Like like a fucking be all end all fucking sting from AEW. That'll be the only one I get. Ringside collectibles. Yeah, when I don't think they've they haven't I don't think they've done like a fucking there's a Sting character. I mean, they've done a Sting. Do- they've done Sting figures. I'm talking for like the ult- like their high end, like the one with all the accessories and. Oh. Yeah. You take um, the head off and it's the wolf pack Sting. Yeah. You like take you the head off, it's Surfer Sting. Stuff, yeah. They just showed. Um, Cause there's a fucking, there's a, they just, WWE just showed a. Uh, it's a Brock Lesnar. Ultimate Warrior one. Yeah, there's a Brock Lesnar one too. Yeah. Well, the multiple heads, like there's a Dingo Warrior. Oh, a Dingo? Yeah. So it's like. Was Dingo it, warrior head and then a warrior head. Was it Towers Towers of Pain? Was him and Sting in WCW? Yeah, I don't know. Before he went to Texas to be well, Dingo? Because cool, we'll, we won't get that state. Like, they need Sting under contract to do that Sting figure. And mm. That's just like this two fucking... They, they, were, they showed that fucking ultimate elite, that elite fucking Cody Rhodes. I'm like they just put one of those out in AEW that had more shit with it. Yeah, but yeah, we'll get in touch. We'll talk more about wrestling stuff in a bit. Um, if we even need to, I mean, it's ten thirty. We're at an hour thirty-seven. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, we'll come back next week with the uh, the panel and stuff came out if we heard anything new or if it was just a bunch of wheel spinning. I'm sure it's going to be tons of trailers. And yeah, I mean, the, the only thing I would assume is the only thing ready to have anything would be Wakanda forever. Yeah, you got it. I don't know. They might, they might hold that until fucking D23. I mean, that would be like right before it was supposed to come out. They've been holding trailers for like a month or two mm-hmm. out. So who knows? I don't know when D23 is. Is it in September? No, I mean, if it's in September, I think D- uh, Wakanda Forever is like November. So that would be like two months out. I mean, they've been, lately, the past couple of movies, they've been holding their trailers like super That's what close I'm saying. to like, release date. Like a month, like, yeah, like you don't see a trailer until like the month before it comes out. The, um... I don't know. I've, I've read like supposedly the leaked fucking plot line for Wakanda Forever and I'm like... Oh, Doom. Well, I mean, I'm fine with Doom, but I'm like, I, like, I can't, like, oh, they killed T'Challa off, off. I'm like, no, like, why? Like, this is the problem I have with fucking comic book movies. Like, just because a person playing a character dies does not mean you kill a character off. I thought they came out and said they're not going to do that. I don't know. Oh, D23 Expo is my birthday weekend. Yeah, so they may hold a bunch of shit for fucking that. Friday... Friday and Saturday, September 9th. September yeah, because I don't 10th. think there's any. I don't think there's any like Disney Plus shit at fucking San Diego. At yeah, least. so they hold in all that until fucking. Yeah, there's gonna be something at the, they'll, they'll they'll show something at the fucking panel Saturday, but I don't know that we're gonna get anything massive. See, what sucks is I can, I know somebody that does as a vendor for Comic Con every year for like the past. 15 years, 20 years. 
And um, every year he keeps telling me, dude, I can get you a, like, because they sell out immediately mm-hmm. within seconds. And then the secondary market is fucking outrageous just to buy tickets for it. And he can get me face value tickets mm-hmm. as a vendor. Um, and every year he keeps telling me, he's like, dude, you got to come. You got, you have to experience it. The, uh, I mean, I did see like, a, like there's fucking actual panels that like people would go to that. Like, I don't want to go to any fucking panel. I don't want to script s- writing and all this other shit. Like, I want to sit in line for like two hours, three hours just to go watch a fucking one panel. I don't know. There's so many fucking panels. I don't think you got to fucking sit in panels that long. It's not. If anything, here's the worst part. I'm going to be on the vendor floor looking at all this fucking cool ass shit. That you can't get. That I can't buy. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you're going to have the fucking San Diego Comic Con fucking price hike. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Like, Alex Ross has his own row. Mm-hmm. And he's not even there. His, like, he's that big that yeah, he that doesn't have to go to. Shit, yeah, it's just prints and shirts and merchandise. I don't think they bring any of the original, any of his original stuff. It's just his fucking his handler dude just mm-hmm. taking care Selling of all that. Shit. But yeah, it's it's one of those I would love to go, but it's just I hear it's so many nightmare stories of like you can't find a hotel. Oh yeah, you <coughs> don't even try you to go. You probably have to book a year in advance. Don't even try to go in, go out and eat somewhere because Yeah, everything's packed. There was horror stories of people waiting like over an hour just at McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, something like that, it's too big to, like, fucking go to. No, it's too big for that city. I mean, I don't know. I just think even, I think even anywhere else, I think that's just, there's too many people that go to it. Mm-hmm. Now it's not even a thing. Like, it's not even about the comic books or the vendors or anything like that. It's about... Yeah, it's about the presentation. Like, I mean, it's, that, a, it's about the panels now. You, you're going to be, it's going to be different, like... Because it's it's Marvel about, and Disney are like they stopped going years ago, and like this is the first time they've been back since I think like 2018. Because it's now it's not about the comic books anymore. It's about because I it's remember like, it's about t- it, it's a general fandom fucking convention. It's a uh, because um, I remember seeing. Well, uh, I mean, look at Tim's convention. How many booths are actually shell- selling comic books? More than fucking Wizard World. <laughs> That's true, but <laughs> it's still, you know, you still got you guys trying to fucking sell $30 fucking pop figures and, you know. Pops is fucking huge still. I don't fucking get it. Like, I have mm-hmm. I have pops of, like, certain characters. I don't understand people who collect them, though. Because I was, when I was next door, when we went out to Tim's shop, I was talking to uh, the owner of the Funko store. And um, I asked him, I was like, dude, this thing still sells. And he's like, like he does the whatnot mm-hmm. shit too. Dude, I'm so, t- like, that's all you see on fucking whatnot is like Funko, like Funkos. And sh- I'm like, he said he makes, oh, he makes so much fucking money. He's got like 600 subscribers or something like that, a thousand subscribers. And he, he makes so much extra money doing that mm-hmm. than selling, from, selling in the shop. I mean, Fucking Tim's kid said the same thing. I mean, if you get a good night where people are in there wanting to spend money. Yeah, they're averaging a couple hundred dollars a night. They do it selling back issues. Mm-hmm. I know Travis, depending on what he had when the Transformers stuff was up, he was... I mean, I think Travis, if he knew better than what he had... I did see he had... He, he, he put a picture up of my Resident Evil figures I, I fucking gave him. Oh, did he? Yeah, but he didn't have a price on them. I went and looked at them. I'm like, they're like thirty bucks a pop on eBay. So I mean, I got probably like half of what I should have got monetarily, but whatever. If I ever actually had to sell that collection in the other room, oh yeah, then we'd be talking a different story. I mean, if anything, do do you own like Facebook auction? Because I see that a lot now. Yeah, I know. I need to. I need to figure out how I'm gonna sell those two airsoft guns. Like, I just. I know, like that fucking Magnum's never for sale. The Wesker. Uh, fucking the Resident Evil Barry. Zero. 
No, it's Resident Evil Zero. Oh. The big fucking chrome magnum. And I have like an early one, not, you know, in the... I got a Samurai Edge, which I think is the fifth anniversary. Mm-hmm. My figures with 10th anniversary. So like, this shit's all pretty old. Like, but you never see them on eBay anymore. So that's like 2006? 2005? The, the figures with 10th anniversary, which would have been, yeah, it would have been like early 2000s because Resident Evil came out, what, 96, 98? Because I was in high school because I remember... It, well, yeah, I mean, it came out like right before. It either came out the right as I was graduating or the year before. So it, it was like a 98, 97. I barely remember what I did last week, but I know... I can recite vividly my first time sitting down at a, at my friend's house playing his cousin's PlayStation in that scene of the zombie slowly turning his head to look at you at the beginning of the game. That is like iconic. Yeah. I'm trying to see exactly what one I have because I have like a special edition. It's in a fucking case and everything. Nope, not that one. I don't know. I think I put them back in the fucking... Uh, Isn't four this year? Oh, f- next Beginning of next year. March, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, March. Yeah, the March. remake of four should be beginning of next year. Yeah, I completely forgot Capcom's little thing. Um. Oh, they're going to re-release... The Re-Listen Village. Yeah, no. That they, it's, it's like got the a, special edition. Yeah. With And then there's like the DLC where you play as Rose. I think that's at the end of the year. My God, it's been so long since I fucking posted these, uh, this fucking movie up. I've wasted so much time not fucking making shit. It's ridiculous. Mm. I mean, you could just look up when Resident Evil came out. No, I'm looking for... Add 10 years. No, I'm looking for... For this... Fucking god damn it. Yeah, that's the fucking the fucking samurai edge with the fucking compressor on the front. And then Didn't you still have that hat before the tornado? Yeah no, I think that hat got fucked up outside. Okay. Like a good while ago, and then the fucking Magnum. But that Magnum, like Anytime I've seen it listed, like unless it's somebody who lists it and then buys it from themselves, it fucking sells for like seven hundred fucking bucks. Was that supposed to be take place in the Resident Evil universe? No, that you was just, just strictly. You showed a very close up of. Yeah, that umbrella. was just strictly my own fucking, my own little fucking Easter egg. Because mm-hmm. you see the fucking the stars logo on the other one. Dude, I I tried to film that so many fucking times. I just at that point I was just like, fuck it. Let me do something with fucking effects and shit. Like you why that whole fucking thing I shot in like a different fucking version. Where I'm just like muscle for John. And then I fucking end up shooting everybody. And then Jason's fucking the only one I don't shoot. 
Because so no matter what, we all we both end up leaving at the same time, and everybody else ends up getting killed. I don't know. I fucking I've written that thing so many times. I've I've, I've shot it like three or four times. I need to need to do something. I'm I'm tempted to try and kick start my creative juices and uh, do the in the air tonight bit from the first episode in Miami Vice. The fucking montage and then him calling his ex. It's not going to be in there tonight from Risky Business. No. <laughs> it's going to be in the air tonight from Miami Vice. Do two different versions, one with the non-point version and one with the fucking... It wasn't in, in there tonight. Phil Collins version. Was the subway scene in there tonight? I don't know. I'd have to... I think so. Dude, there's like there's certain things in cinema that are like inspiration. It's that I don't know why it's that fucking scene, because all it is is a driving montage, and it's not even edited to the song all that well. But it's fucking it's great, and then the fucking the montage from Rocky IV that literally tells you the entire story, so you don't need to watch the first three movies. Oh, speaking and again, of, that's another driving montage. So I'm like, speaking of which, he's fighting with the producer to get his rights back. I don't blame him. Fuck it's it. It's a Rocky. I watched. He was in an episode of uh, This Is Us, playing himself. Sylvester Stallone. Mm-hmm. Because the uh, the white son is like an actor, and he was in a, like a World War II movie with Sylvester Stallone. And Sylvester Stallone's talking to the sister and like people didn't think I could write Rocky and people didn't think I could do this and that. I mean, one of the actors does look like his fucking kid from the movies growing up. Do you mean Milo Ventimiglia who was in... Heroes? Yeah. Yeah. Who played his son in the last two movies? Was it? Yeah. Oh. Like his actual son was in, in Creed. Yes, he was in. So that's not the same kid from. His actual son was in Rocky, the one with Tommy Gunn in the fake five, where the fucking kid stands up to the bully and, and starts saying, "Fuck, what does he say?" Um. It's the one way they lose all the money and they have to move back. Yeah, it's Rocky Five. That is his actual son who ends up who died not that long after making that movie. Yeah, because he went because all the medical procedures and all that other stuff he ended up um, because of the fight with Dolph in four. He lost all the money. Adrian left him. No. It, is Adrian still with him mm-hmm. in five? They just they okay. lose all their money and because they, of they, medical bills. I want to say. I thought it was also part of Paul, Paul, like Paulie fucked them over too, which makes no sense as why he comes with them. I want to say it's medical bills because yeah, so he was so way, fucked like, up from that fight. He gets screwed over. They lose all their money. They move back to Philly, and he starts training. And he trains, starts training Tommy, and then ignoring his son. His son's like went from being like this good kid to like. Hanging out with some fucking roughneck kids. And he says like the sh- corniest, cheesiest fucking line to but a that bully. But is, that is actual Sylvester Stallone's real son in that movie. Okay. Who died not long after that. And Tommy Gunn is only known for... Tommy Morrison's only known for the boxer that had contracted HIV. Yeah, because I mean he wasn't, he wasn't much of a fighter. He was an up-and-coming yeah, heavyweight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and then... That fucked him over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then that's why Milo Ventimiglia is playing Rocky's son in the other movies. Okay. Because his actual son's dead. Who played his actual? Who played his son, Rocky's son? Okay. Yeah. I didn't watch Balboa. I heard it was good. It is good. I forgot who does he fight? The real fucking dude he fights. Some him. fucking yeah, and he gets pissed because even though he won the fight, everybody's chanting for Rocky. It's like yeah, bro, nobody fucking gives a like yeah, no shit, you beat a fucking sixty year old man. 
No, but he's a real boxer. Yeah, yeah. Like a real fucking... It's not Floyd. No. Oh, fuck. I can't think of the name. And then the two Creed movies are great. I still haven't watched them, too. I've seen one. But it's kind of recycling. It's like, once again, like in the first movie, underdog fights his way up to the championship and doesn't win. That's what good movies are. Like... He literally, stories that people can relate to. He literally made the exact same fucking movie 40 years later. Except really, Adonis wasn't an underdog. He started off from Adonis nothing. Adonis is the son of Apollo Creed, uh, you know. Yeah, but yeah. also, like Rocky, was a nobody who had to take all these fucking fights and build his career up well, yeah, no, to get Adonis to Adonis. Adonis had to Adonis. prove himself that he wasn't just a name. That that was that was the difference. Like Adonis had to prove he was an actual fighter, and also he had way better. Because that was around the time period. It's like, man, Tessa Thompson's in fucking everything. And she's good in it. Like she's good in both. She's she's good in it. But Jesus Christ, she was taking every fucking acting job at the time. Yeah, because that was after. Because I think Atlanta, right? She's in Atlanta. I'm trying to remember. Was... That's what like. Really fucking put her on the map. Did fucking did did crew did that come out after Ragnarok? Creed. Yeah. Fuck no. That came, came out, out way before. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what the hell she was in before that though. Uh, um, pardon me. Oh fuck. Uh, sorry to bother you. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a, such a great movie. It's such. A, she fucking does a monologue from Last Dragon. Such while great, people throw shit at her such a great fucking movie that movie took some fucking turns jesus I love christ that movie. movie is fucking great and anything that gives the fucking last dragon its fucking props is awesome because that movie's fucking amazing um westworld yeah but i think that's that's post westworld's post fucking creed Yeah, Creed was 2015. Ragnarok was 2017. Dear white people. Maybe she was in Atlanta. She Maybe didn't have... I mean, else. her role in the first one wasn't that big. Her role in the second one's way bigger. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't in... I thought she was in Atlanta. Her role in the second one's no, way bigger. No, the girl from Domino. Domino from Deadpool 2. Is it Atlanta? Is Atlanta. Oh. I think that's what I'm... Yeah, I mean, Tessa Thompson was like... It was a, a small role in the first one. The second one, it was a bigger role. Yeah, it was Ragnarok. Sorry to bother you. Um, Annihilation. Portlandia. They're white people. She did Men in Black with Crib Simworth. Oh, that's so fucking bad. I had high hopes on it for that fucking movie. Such high hopes, and it's just... So predictable, I mean, so he bad. Just, like Chris Hemsworth needs the right person writing for him. He's a funny dude. He's a Ex- great actor. Extraction's a good action movie, but is it like a action movie that would have made a, mo- a bunch of money at the theater? No, but it is a very good action movie, and I would I would watch more movies about that character because I think they're doing more. Yeah, they, they're doing another one, but it's not a. It's not a Rambo, which is basically what it is. He's a fucking Rambo type character. He's a very funny guy. Like he's Oh yeah, he's got he's, fucking amazing comedic timing. Yeah. And I mean as long, like he can play a fucking strong silent fucking hero. Like I think that's the distinction. Like he needs to like if you're going to play the action hero, his dialogue needs to be to a minimum. Heart of the Sea. I think it's I think it's the name was very good. About um the loose interpret like the loose based on a true story of how Herman Melville wrote Moby Dick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That he was a part of the the ship that was based mm-hmm. on with all the stuff. Um he was very good in Rush. I highly recommend Rush. Mm-hmm. But again, Rush is based on actual... Like, you can go back and... Yeah, that's a real actual That's thing. real people. Yeah. Like, Nicky Lauda is still alive and actually didn't shit on it. Like, he's like, no, it's pretty accurate. 
Like Nicky allowed a fucking telling Ferrari who made shitty cars. It was great. Yeah, but he de- he's dead. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth's character's dead. Character's um, dead. Okay. Nicky Laude was the other guy. Yeah. Yeah, he, that would, he's a very good actor. Yeah, I mean, he can play. It's. I'm. Cannot wait to see this fucking Hulk Hogan movie if, if, if it, it ever comes out. Because they stopped the Vince McMahon one. The, the, yeah, the Vince McMahon. Was that a do- like That was a documentary, though. Yeah, but they were doing a... Supposedly, Bradley Cooper was going to play Vince for a Netflix movie about Vince's life. That's highly going to be fucking... That's not happening. If Netflix canceled the, the documentary, the movie's not happening either. But it was like a WWE film, yeah. so it's... It would have been... Yeah, it was all fucking glitter and look over here, not over there. The Young Rock. Dude, I'm telling you, that that that's the one that I'm like, I want to see how they handle that shit next year. Young Rock? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they made him look like a fucking saint. Like, he fucking, they put a fucking twist, like, Vince holding a fucking, like, blood grudge against his dad. Like, got fucking just, like, swept over. Like, oh, that's the wrestling business. You, you, you know, when you see each other again, you just act like nothing's the matter. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, because that scene, that last episode has the bit when uh, Rocky comes out to help Rock at SummerSlam. Yeah, at some point early in fucking Rock's career, like when he was still Rocky Maivia, yeah. they thought having Rocky come out to help him. To really get him over with the crowd. Really play off the three generations. Yeah, and having Rocky come out to help him was going to, you know, get him over with the crowd, and the crowd would just yeah. boot the shit out of both of them. They, um... I forgot who said it. One of, like, a major Hollywood executive or CEO basically came out. It might have been the Sony dude. It's like, there's only two people in this industry that's worth the salary they get paid. Tom Cruise and now because mission and Impo- like, yeah, maybe foreign box office mission impossibles make money, but yes, like nobody's making there. No, every movie hopes they make foreign money. Yeah. That, nobody, that's, that's, nobody gears to domestic anymore. Yeah. Because domestic, nobody goes to the, like, again, that's why his movies still make money overseas. Fucking yeah. a ton of money. Anything he does makes money. Crazy cult people don't they don't care mm. about crazy cult people overseas. Um it's like and, a normal occurrence to them. And then he said the rock was the other person that's <sighs> deserves of I mean, his salary. I don't know. I'd have to look and see what his foreign box office looks like. He's extremely like I'd have to see like what fucking Jungle Cruise did overseas. I'm sure it's one of those movies it might not done anything here, but if you look at the, the that's what I'm global like, box office, because I think fucking, like Rampage made money overseas. Uh, what is San Andreas made money overseas? I gotta say, it's a Disney film. Jungle Cruise probably made bank overseas. Yeah, depending on what what markets it got released, and if it got a Chinese release, it probably did. I mean, that's really what you got to fucking worry about now. Like, is fucking can you get a Chinese release? I don't know. Did you hear what's going on in China? Oh yeah, I mean they're having all kind of shit. The bank. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. Had to put fucking uh, tanks out in front of the bank to keep their people from getting their money back out. Because money's not real. If everybody went to, uh, if everybody went to the bank to get their money out, there'd be not. There wouldn't be enough money. Uh, two two twenty. Jungle Cruise. I don't know if that's domestic or domestic 116 international 103 combined 220. So I guess it kind of could be considered a flop. Dwayne Johnson's highest grossing movie so far, The Mummy Returns 2001. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, that was such a huge 435 fucking... million. 202 at the domestic box office, 233 San Andreas, 456. Jesus, really? 301 internationally. 
155 then, here. And then you got to think all the fucking Fast and the Furious movies. Fast Five, 630. But you can't really... That, that's not really on the rock. Yeah, anything. Like, those movies make money. But more, it's still only 210 domestic and 420 international. Moana. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. 636 total more internationally than fucking domestically. Dude, he's an international. Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw, $759 million total. 700 and something of that is probably... 173 domestic, 585 international. They need to make another Hobbs and Shaw. I'm sorry. Like, Shaw being in the next fucking Fast and the Furious movie does not fuck... Like, no. Just I, give me another Hobbs and Shaw. Give me another Jason Statham in the Rock movie. Fast and Furious 6, 789 million. 238 of that was domestic. Jumanji, 800 million. Because even the rundown and Walk Tall and shit like that was number one at the box office. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. 961 million. Fate of the Furious. 1.2 billion. Yeah, you can't count the Fast and the Furious. No, you can't count those. And then Furious 7, 1.5. Yeah, you really can't fucking... Because, look, 1.2 billion, only the 0.2 came from America. And then 1.5 billion, and only 0.3 came from America. Yeah, the, the Hollywood... All these people complaining about Hollywood, like, fucking changing shit for, like, China. Like, yeah, motherfucker, because that's where the money comes from. Super Pets is going to be, make a ton of money, because you got Kevin Hart and fucking and The, the Rock, Rock. Yeah. Again. Um, And then after that, you got Black Adam at the end of the year. I just don't know. Like, that movie, I'm like, oh. Because I'll see it just because of him. I think he, he, he's very passionate about the roles he picks. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, now, I know he's been wanting to play Black Adam and it's a now, thing. like as long as they are like, like Black Adam is a villain. No, it's fucking, it's DC. It's Marvel. Every fucking comic book movie about the villain, they have to have some tragic fucking Yeah, no, because I think they changed, they changed the fucking origin too. I don't know. That's why I'm just like, like yeah, the costumes look good. Like Doctor Fate and the Justice Society look like yeah. they look. Those costumes are way better than the fucking Snyderverse costumes. But I'm still like, I'll probably wait till he comes on HBO Max. <laughs> it's the um, well, that's like uh, on Dynamite. The Rock was technically on the screen at the same time as AEW. I mean, technically, because he's the master of ceremonies for Shark Week. Technically, he gave a shout out to Ken Shamrock or Kurt Angle or somebody when he got inducted into the TNA Hall. Yeah, of well, fame. I mean, he did that, but I'm talking like you know, like there was a you know, it was the picture in picture, and there's The Rock yeah. promoting Shark Weekend. I had so much, so many people talking about that on Twitter of like the forbidden Rock goes through the forbidden door. I mean, technically, he for that he is working for the other company because. I mean, Warner Brothers doesn't own AEW, but I mean, Warner Brothers is the fucking, the TV contract people for them. So, but yeah, I think, I think we finally stretched this out long enough, finding a random ass shit to talk about. Just imagine The Rock coming out at AEW at like All Out in September. Yeah, D23 is like the same weekend, I think, as All Out. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I just want to know what the fucking plans are for like fucking X-Men and shit. Like, tell me how mutants pop up all. Like, that's all I want to know. Like, just give me an explanation as to how mutants pop up. I don't care about it. Like, any I don't like this whole, like, the bangle made fucking Kamala a mutant. No, I want a fucking real reason. I don't give a shit about any panels except for Marvel. Yeah. Because <laughs> DC, like... Does they, they have nothing going on. They're not going to... They are not going to show shit from Flash. I can guarantee... We are not going to get a full Flash trailer until, like, right before that movie comes fuck out. I can guarantee... 
I'll put money down on this that the Henry Cavill appearance is going to be in Black Adam. That's going to be the announcement. Probably. I mean, that's such a waste. Such a waste. But again, like, I don't know what he would play in the Marvel Universe other than Captain Britain. And that's a waste. Cavill? Yeah. Union Jack? This one, like, it's basically all the same, like, Captain Britain, fucking Union Jack. Like, that's it. Mm. Like, one of those British, like, because there's no X Men that he fits unless he lost a lot of bulk. That sad thing is, he well, fucking, he is a perfect fucking Superman. Suppose, Just let him act like Superman. Supposedly, him and Tom Hardy is like the two front runners for James Bond. So, we'll see. I mean, I can see him as James Bond. However, um, they do that. I mean, we almost lost Hugh Jackman. Or almost wasn't Wolverine because he was one of the top contenders for um, James Bond. Yeah. Before they settled with them. Um, but no, he got Wolverine because no, they went with the Duray Scott. Duray Scott broke his arm. Who would Pierce Brosnan? Maybe. <coughs> or maybe it was while he was doing Wolverine that he was gonna have to stop doing Wolverine. Yeah, I think that's what to, it was because to do he, the Daniel Craig. He wasn't gonna be Wolverine until Doray Scott broke his arm and had to be replaced. Speaking of DC to end with happy news. Ben Affleck got married to Jennifer Lopez. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are married again. In a drive through Las Vegas wedding. <laughs> I mean, at this point, like, like they all they all should have just been like, fuck it. Yeah. What's funny is now everybody's making it because either you love Dallas Cowboys or you hate Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. Like the Yankees. Yep. So now everybody's saying since whenever, 97 or whenever um jennifer lopez has six wing rings the cowboys zero (laughs) so i was like dude she hasn't been married six times um the dancer yeah um mark anthony a rod a rod twice the ben affleck (laughs) Is it twice? Yeah, they were married. If they were married the first go around, so then it is one more. Um, husbands. Ben Affleck, Mark Anthony, Chris Judd. Which was the dancer? Oh, Jane I Noah. Then that's number six. I don't know who that is. I'd have to see him. 97 to 90, 97 to 98. Was that maybe, was that her first husband? Yeah, that's a very, very first husband. Okay, yeah. So then that's the, the backup list. dancers, 2001 to 2003, Mark Anthony, 2004 to 2014. Yeah, that was who she was married she to. She was engaged to A-Rod, never got married. Well, I mean, she still got a ring out of it. Yeah. <laughs> she dated quite quite a lot of people and that's what I'm saying Ben Affleck twice Jake Drake she was with Casper Smart whoever the fuck this is I can't believe we're ending the podcast talking about the people that Jennifer Lopez has gotten rings from yeah Ben Affleck was it Geely yep Geely and Jersey Girl it only she's, f- she dies at the beginning of Jersey Girl. Yeah, because she's the, the mom, The mom, right? yeah. Okay. It only, again, Jersey Girl's not a bad movie. It only popped in my head because um, Kevin Smith was talking about Affleck being in um, yeah, because, Clerks know, 3. Yeah, because it was Jennifer Garner that didn't let Ben hang out with him. Yeah. See, now we just need Ben Affleck and Kevin Smith to show up in a Thor movie as actors in Asgard. Since you got Matt Damon. 
Oh. Meet Ben Affleck. And then oh, we you have just have Kevin Smith being like the director. Dogma reunion. Yeah. And fucking Thor. I mean, that's what I would do. Like, that's the kind of fucking Easter egg things I would do. That would be straight down to like would the, how they make fun of it in the Kevin Smith movies. You know, uh, was one of the Jay and Silent Bob's. I'm sure, like when they would make it, like, yeah, Kevin Smith's gonna you know get his friends to fucking just show up in a fucking movie. I don't remember which it was. James like the first Jane Silent Bob. Oh, Jane Silent Bob. Strike back. Strike back. Yeah, yeah, when they were fucking at the movie studio. I mean, I think I, it's Ben. I think it's Ben Affleck. He's like, yeah, uh, the director's pressure, and you know, because we, I can't remember the line, but there's like a line fucking poking fun at the fact that all the same people in Cameron Smith movies. Technically, Jane Silent Bob is in the Scream universe. Yes, that is true. So technically, they can show up in Scream Six. That would be amazing. Connie Chung is. Yeah, he said, hey, what is a fucking something, something Connie Chung to Connie Cox's character. Yeah, that, that, I completely forgot about that. The Jay and Silent Bob are in the fucking screen. Like, so mm-hmm. Scream takes place in the VSQ universe. I think it was because Wes Craven was a huge fan of Kevin's. And that was right around the time they did Strikes Back. Mm-hmm, probably so. Yeah, I think I think it was around the time because I think I think he was either a big fan of Dogma or something like that. Mm-hmm. That and they just so happened to be filming close by, and that he they just came and did a little fucking quick scene. That movie's gonna kill me, fucking Clerks Three, just like shots fired, motherfucker. Unfortunately, he's not coming here. The road show to. Do Clerks Three like he did with uh, Dogma at Tulane. Oh. oh man, we just is he is it going wide or is it going limited? Yeah, it's gonna be one of those fathom events type things. I'm guessing like reboot was. Hmm. The only place the only place playing it was fucking AMC across the, the river. Yeah, too bad the fucking movie theater would no, be... No, in Slide L. Oh. No, oh, the palace. Yeah. The, no, the Grand. I'm sorry, the Grand is what's in Slide L. No, I take that back. I only went to Slide L because me and Tim was in the movie and Tim lives in Slide L, so I ended up meeting him because there was like, oh, is Kevin going to show up to the yeah. Louisiana whatever premiere, blah, blah, blah. He didn't. Spoiler. Um. Yeah. Only if if only we had a movie theater that we knew the people who owned it and could fucking book special shit. Oh wait. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I guess that's it. As yeah. I've said for like the fourth time now. Um. Until next week, I'm Wayne. That was Paul, and we're out. <laughs>